Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we'll understand how to run Arimax model in eViews. An Arimax model or autoregressive integrated moving average with exogenous variables is an extension of the Arima model used for time series forecasting. The Arimax model incorporates external factors known as exogenous variables that can influence the target variable making it useful for situations where there is additional information that may impact the time series. The key components of the Arimax model are AR terms, that is the autoregressive terms. This component refers to the relationship between a dependent variable and its lagged value known as previous values, I integrated. This component involves differencing the dependent variable to make the time series stationary. The property of this series should be the mean and the variance are constant over time. MA, moving average. This component involves modeling the error term as a linear combination of past error terms. X, exogenous variable. These are external variables that are thought to influence the dependent variable. These variables are not the part of the time series itself, but can help in predicting the dependent variable. So this is the Arimax model equation, yt, dependent variable, and its lagged, lagged values. These are error terms, and this is the exogenous variables. These are the lagged values of the error terms, and this is the error term. So yt is the dependent variable, this one. c is the constant term. pi are the coefficients of the autoregressive part. So here is it. Theta j are the coefficients of the moving average the lagged values of the error terms, et is the error term at time t, x, t minus k are the exogenous variables, that is a, that is a external, external variable, beta k are the coefficients for the exogenous variables, applications of Arimax, economic forecasting, it is used for economic, for economic forecasting where external factors like interest rates, inflation, or other macroeconomic indicators affect the time series. Weather forecasting where additional environmental variables such as temperature, humidity influence the prediction. Marketing analysis where advertising spend or other marketing efforts impact sales, sales trends over time. Assumptions of Arimax, linearity. The relationship between the dependent variable and the exogenous variable is assumed to be linear. Stationarity. The time series data should be stationary. If the series is not stationary, differencing or other transformations may be required to achieve stationarity. Independence of errors. The residuals, that is the errors, from the model should be independent of each other. In other words, there should not, there should not be any autocorrelation in the residuals. This ensures that the model has captured a time-dependent structure in the data. Homoscedasticity. The residuals should have a constant variance over time. This means that the spread of the residuals should be uniform across all levels of the dependent variable. Normality of errors. While not strictly necessary, normally distributed residuals can make the estimation of parameters more robust and the interpretation of statistical test more straightforward. Exogeneity of variables. The exogenous variables included in the models should be truly external to the dependent variables process. This means that they should not be influenced by the past values of the dependent variable. Now let's see how we can do this in eViews. So we are having a data from 1955 to 1974. The variables are GDP, employment and capital. Now we will go in quick estimate equation. We will write here GDP as a dependent variable, then C constant, then the AR terms, the autoregressive terms AR1 and now I will introduce the exogenous variable employment. So employment and it's one lagged value. So employment minus one, one lag and click OK. We got the results. 
here, here they are. I have simply copied this result on the slides for the interpretation. Let us go to the slide again. So the variable employment, employment by employment at lag one, ER one, and their coefficients and the probability value. Now let's do the interpretation. We'll start from R square. R square value of 0.9916 indicates that approximately 99.16 of the variation in GDP is explained by the model. This suggests an excellent fit of the model to the data. Adjusted R square value, so here is it, of 0.9892 indicates 98.92% of the variation in the GDP is explained by the model after adjusting for the number of predictors. It still indicates a very good fit. AKIK information criterion. EIC is a criterion for a model comparison. So if we are having two models, the model which is having a lower value is a better model. Lower value suggests a better model fit relative to other models. Here the value is 21.1752. Here is it. Squares criterion. Similar to AI, EIC but penalizes model complexity more heavily. F statistics. So here is it, the value. It tests the overall significance of the model, a high value of 411.8084 and p-value of 0, 0.00 indicate that the model is statistically significant. Durbin Watson stats. It tests for autocorrelation in residuals. Here the value is. Values around 2 suggest no correlation. Value significantly below 2 suggest positive autocorrelation. Here the value is one point. 592, so there is a possibility of autocorrelation. Inverted ER roots, this one. This indicates the stability of the ER part of the model. Value less than 1 suggests that the model is stable. Here, value is 0 0.71, which is less than 1, so the model is stable. Now, let's proceed further and, and interpret these terms. ER1, the ER1 coefficient is positive and significant as p-value is 0 0.0012 which is less than 5% level of significance. This indicates that the model incorporates an autoregressive term with the coefficient of 0 0.7071, here is it, meaning that the current GDP is positively, positively influenced by its own value from the previous period. So this is ER1. Now we talk about the exogenous variable employment. Employment. The coefficient for employment is positive and statistically significant as its p-value is less than 0 0.05. For each unit increase in employment, GDP increases by approximately 14.24 units, holding other factors constant. This indicates a positive relationship between employment and GDP. Em employment at lag 1. So here is it. The coefficient for the lagged Employment variable is also positive and significant, p-value less than 0 0.05. This suggests that the past employment has a positive effect on current GDP. Specifically, a one-unit increase in employment in the previous pre period is associated with 22.30 unit increase in GDP in the current period. Sigma square. This represents the estimated variance of the residuals. It is significant, suggesting that the model appro appro appropriately accounts for the variability in GDP not explained by the model. Now, let's do the testing for the residuals. So again, I will go in E-Views, View, Residual Diagnostics, Activate Correlogram Squared Residuals, Legs Included are 12, click OK. And we have to see this probability value and we have to see these spikes for the autocorrelation and this is partial correlation. All these spikes should be in this confidence interval indicated by the dotted line. All of them are inside. It means that there is no autocorrelation. So let's do the interpretation for this chart. Null hypothesis is residuals are not autocorrelated. See the probability values. The P values associated with the Q statistics, this one, at different legs are all about 0 0.05, meaning that for each leg, there is insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis of no autocorrelation. In simple language, there is no autocorrelation in the residuals. 
This suggests residuals are not autocorrelated. Now the next, again go in view, residual diagnostics, histogram normality test. So the normality table and we have to see the p-value of the jark Barra test. It is 0.743. Okay, now let's do the interpretation for this also. Null is residuals are normally distributed. See the p-value. The p-value associated with jark Barra test are all above 0.05, meaning that residuals follow normal distribution. This is also good. See, residuals are not autocorrelated. It is good. Normally distributed, it is also good. Now let's check for other assumptions. Residual diagnostics, serial correlation is not available here. No problem. We'll go in view, residual diagnostics. And we will run heteroscedasticity test. Bruce Pagan Godfrey test. Click OK. And I'll copy the results on the slide. The null is residuals are homoscedastic. This is the p-value which we have to see. That is for the observed R square, observed into the R square. The Bruce Pagan Godfrey test indicates, the results indicates that there is no significant evidence of heteroscedasticity in the model. As all p-values are greater than the usual significance threshold value of 0 0.05. This suggests that the residuals are homoscedastic. And you can proceed without correcting for the heteroscedasticity. So this is also good. Conclusion. Positive impact of employment on GDP. The model indicates a strong positive relationship between employment and GDP. Both in the current period and with a lag. For each unit increase in employment, GDP increases significantly, highlighting Employment as a crucial driver of economic growth. Importance of lagged employment effects. The significant positive impact of lagged employment on GDP suggests that the past employment levels continue to influence current economic activity. This underscores the importance of maintaining a stable and supportive employment environment over time. Policies aimed at sustaining employment levels and reducing job losses can have a long-term benefits for economic stability and growth. Autoregressive dynamics. The positive autoregressive term indicates that the GDP values are influenced by their past values. This suggests that the economic policies should consider historical trends and past performance when designing future strategies. Long-term planning and a focus on consistent economic policies can help ensure the positive growth trends that the positive growth trends are maintained. So this was all about how to run Arimax model in eViews. For more videos on econometric analysis using eViews, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can also refer my playlist in which I have uploaded videos on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also follow me on different social medias. Link given in the description box.